Hi guys, it's Tim from Advanced In Car Tech and today we are back in the Smart 453 and we're trying something really new and cool in doing some new videos on coding the Smart and all that sort of stuff. So first and foremost, you're going to need one of these bad boys. Um, it's an Elm327 device. I've gone for the USB version rather than the Wi-Fi because USB is a bit more stable. You're not connecting to anything, etc, etc. Um, it has to have the... the, the the correct type of chipset, which I can't remember offhand, I think it's like 258KO or something like that. But what I'll do is I'm, I'll, I'll pop a link to where I purchased this so that you can purchase it yourself and then you can do all of the stuff. So today what we're gonna try and do is activate the Android Auto. So this is off the back of that Reddit post that people have been seeing on the Smart 453 forum. Um, and it's more to just give you a bit more of a visual element. So we'll do it in different stages. First bit showing you that there's nothing in here at the moment. I'll then jump onto the laptop with the screen capture stuff and then show you sort of the after effect once I can get hold of a, an Android phone. So the first and most important thing that you've got to make sure is that your smart software is up to date. So to make sure you are up to date, go to systems, status and information, version information, and all of that so you need to be running 11.43 so that's really important 11.343 so make sure you note all that down if you're not on that i can't confirm if it's going to work or not so best bet is just to do it we're then going to just quickly show you mirror link settings at the moment all i can see is mirror link settings and mirror link tutorial so once we've done the coding change, we should then start seeing things like uh, Android Auto, etc., etc. So what we'll do is we'll jump onto the laptop, um, we'll plug into the OBD port, which is down there in the passenger footwell, and uh, we'll get cracking. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to go to your DT, DDT for all software that you've already installed and already downloaded the Renault database for the ECUs. So I'm not going into that. If you don't know what you're doing with that, you shouldn't be doing it. I've got the USB version, so I've selected this serial port, aware that the harm, it can do harm to the vehicle and then gone into connected mode. The system then scans your vehicle and opens up this new screen that we're gonna be doing all of the interfacing uh, with for your vehicle. So first and foremost, uh, go to Twingo 3. And then what you're looking for is navigation on this section, so click on down. So open it up a little bit, just make it a bit easier. Keep on scrolling till you find navigation, then look for 4.6. Now you only get 4.6 if you have 11.343 installed on your sat nav, that's why you have to do it. So once you've double clicked, go into configuration, ECU configuration number 13, and that's the one where we're gonna be doing all of the work. And then once you've gone into there, you need to click the little Einstein symbol just up there that allows you to make the changes that you need to do and activates the change mode. Click screen. Uh, you're then scrolling down the list until you find the stuff where it says Android Auto. Currently it says not present. Um, so we need to change that to present, but we're gonna change the other bits for uh, some other little bits as well. So SPVR, that's for Siri. That will allow you to use the voice control button for Siri. We're turning on Android Auto feature, um, and then we're just gonna leave it as that for my particular setup. Okay, so once you've done that and you've got your changes, um, I've put them all as uh, present. You then need to just double check what's going on. And then as soon as you're happy with it all, click right ECU config. That will then send the data. It will change on the right hand side to present, 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 yes, yes, present. And then in the bottom block, you'll see that it's done sending ELM request, ELM response, sending request, and then it will show you a delay um, of whatever. But that means that it has now done the uh, changes, which is great. So now we've done the changes, um, you can then, that you then need to do the restart on your, uh, system which is pushing the home button five times it will reboot your stereo in your car and then away you go you're ready to roll okie doke so we've got our samsung device that we need to be able to run android auto i'm an iphone user so i had to find one from somewhere you're going to need your iphone cable oh sorry iphone your android cable for your device samsung whatever and you need to have pre-installed all the apps that you want to be able to use. So things like Android Auto, uh, BBC iPlayer, TuneIn, Spotify, Waze, and all that sort of stuff. So plug it into your USB port, into the bottom of the, the phone. 
Uh, obviously turn the stereo on as well, that might help. It will ask if you want to launch, you click yes. It will disconnect the Bluetooth from your phone. It will also um, uh, take away the SD card navigation from the TomTom -tom mapping, which because uh, you're going to now be using other stuff. So we'll pop this down to one side because you're not going to need to use it because that's the whole point of Android Auto. So um, first and foremost, if it recognises things that you normally go to, it will show them on the on the main home screen, which can always be get back to by pushing the centre button. So first and foremost, let's go to mapping. We'll go to Waze and well because Waze is one of my favorite apps it's free it's all up to date it's accurate uh, and it's a really good navigation system I, I really do uh, like it it's a really good bit of kit and I would recommend you using this more so than um, Google and TomTom Tom and all that sort of stuff um, what I am going to do though is I am just gonna so um, it's a really good bit of software like I said it's free it's very accurate it's up to date it's live and all that sort of stuff so what I'll do is I'll very quickly show you around so if we want to go to somewhere you've got your homework favorites all that sort of stuff I've already tried routing to advance in car tech calculating route 3d mapping zero feet and all that sort of stuff and it will tell you turn by turn if you go to your home button it's also going to come up here which I quite like as well and you can always get back to uh, Android Auto by pushing that little icon down there which is cool so it will give you your turn by turn which is cool if there's POIs nearby like Ford for instance Ford for a smart that's quite clever um, but also you can do things like um, warnings for other ways users so police traffic accident all that sort of stuff I did it earlier moderate there you go thanks you've helped nearby Wazers. so that's good so that's that's what I quite like about it so um, we'll go to, to Google mapping next um, another decent bit of software loaded in that iPhone users unfortunately at the moment with CarPlay don't get so you can zoom in uh, you can move about which is cool and it's very accurate and it's very quick uh, to be able to tell you what it wants to do so let's just uh, stop those wipers from going and show you how it works. So search, again, we can search for where we want to go to or a postcode. I'm going to do advanced in car technologies again. There you go, fancy road, it's all updated. It already knows that we're there. Open until three o'clock today, which is a Friday, so we know that, uh, and it's a three minute journey apparently from here, probably because it hasn't locked on a very good Your destination connection. is on the right. So you get the nice uh, communications and stuff like that going on tell you where we're going all the distance and it's also giving us the street view which I think is pretty cool so it knows that you're going to be coming into this industrial state to be able to find us it will route you again if you're on this screen it will show it up which is pretty cool it thinks we're already there anyway so that's why it's not showed on that screen so that's that so telephone oh we'll go into the settings here so you've got your recent labeled save categories traffic you can turn on as well which is pretty cool and remember you still get the okay google up here to be able to use your voice control there you go cancel i'll just bend that off uh right okay next uh so whilst it's plugged in your telephone's obviously there uh you can dial a number you've got your phone book you you missed you received all that sort of stuff so i'll just show you that very quickly uh, settings, voicemail, dial a number, contacts, call history, blah blah blah. As I mentioned, you can go back to the home page just by pushing that. Again, if you're routing, it will all come up. We're currently 18 degrees in sunny pool. So, music time. So, you're going to get all your standard stuff Audible, Google, Spotify, TuneIn, and iPlayer should be in here, but it obviously hasn't been installed. So, Spotify, I have set this one up. Um, so let's have a look what's going on. Uh, popular playlists, Hot Hits UK. Um, I'll turn it down so that the YouTubes don't get too funny. And then you get your nice album artwork in the background. You can skip, you can pause, you can shuffle, all that sort of stuff. And when you go to the home button, it will show up here Android Auto, wait, what you're listening to, etc., etc. Which is again nice things. You can use your volume and be able to control it, which is again cool. Back to the Android Auto. Uh, again, you've got your recently played and all that sort of stuff in there, so it's really nice and intuitive to be able to use it. Pop that again. Uh, let's go down to say tune in. So if you're 
your smart car hasn't got digital radio, then you can use this tuning app, Radio One, Radio One Extra, Absolute, anything that's on digital radio capital, all that sort of stuff. So we can play it. It will take a bit of time to buffer. And do again get the nice album artwork on the top, which is cool. Um, and yeah, so if you don't have digital radio, but you've got this, and you've got an Android phone, it's a really great way of being able to listen to all those dis decent radio stations that you're you're familiar with but don't have access to. Talk Sport, again, if you listen to a lot of sport, that's gonna be perfect for you guys out there. Um, this camera loves unfocusing from where I want it to do, and it makes it really light in the picture. Okay, so um, last one is the last one on the right, so it takes you back to the Smart page. Again, you can use that to come back here or just push the home button. You do get the nice little icon down here so you can quickly flick back through to Android Auto rather than going through the whole process. But I did want to show you in here and the smartphone screen, the Android Auto settings. So you can get the Auto Connect and all that sort of stuff. Um, the tutorial, I've already played around with the tutorial. It's all in there. If you really want to read it, it's there, but it's a bit sort of common sense-ish. So yeah, um, that's it. This is the Smart 453 with the TomTom Tom nav system. We have used the DT4All software. We've used an Elm cable to be able to activate it with this software, and this is the end result. So for those people saying that you can't have Android Auto on a smart car, uh, here it is, it's all, it's all in, it's all working, um, and it looks really, really good. Likewise, main dealers, uh, as long as the car has got the latest software running in it, which is 11.343, then you can go in behind the scenes, activate the Android Auto stuff that's already in there. CarPlay is the next one on the list, but um, I'm not so sure if that's gonna be available, how long that's gonna take to work out, because I don't think the, the hardware is in the vehicle to be able to do it in terms of the authentication for Apple. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very iPhone user all the time, but I like how slick it looks on the TomTom Tom system. So I'm, I'm tempted to just buy a very cheap Android phone with no SIM card, tether it up to my iPhone, so when I want things like Google and all that, it can just sit in my armrest and uh, I can get Google Maps, Waze, and all that sort of stuff. So if you want us to do this for you, then obviously get in touch. Uh, the video's been here to help you, but you have to take it with a pinch of salt. The disclaimer is you could potentially damage your car by using the DT for all software, so be careful. Um, and also any changes that you make to your car using the DT software, um, they could get reset when you go back to smart, when they update the car and overwrite everything that you've done. So have that in mind that you might have to reactivate it. That goes with anything that you come to activate with DT. Um, it might disappear when you go into Smart. Any questions, get in touch with us uh, in the normal way. The website, the Smart 453 forum, which I'll link to in Facebook, where we've been talking about all the DT uh, upgrades that are possible. Um, and thanks for watching.